Nancy G. Tanji, you are watching Kababayan Today, the only daily talk show for Filipinos here in America. We're very excited when we are able to talk about film, and we've got a film that we want to share with all of you called Flip the Record. It's a little known but lasting explosion of hip hop culture grew out of the Filipino American community of 1980s in San Francisco. There is the awesome poster. Uh, amazing animation. We'll talk about who did that. Um, and it takes us into the beat of an aspiring mobile DJ crew in 1984. Vanessa, the character in the film, is sick of the constraints and boring piano lessons in her conservative Filipino-American household. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. And she starts teaching herself on how to scratch on her older brother's turntables. Now, this is a story um, that a lot of Filipinos can relate to because back in the 80s, all the Filipino kids were DJing, yeah? So we follow Ness as she discovers her talents and place in the local music scene of the era. Um, and that is the actress who's uh, playing the character that we just spoke about. Joining us is the director, Marie Hamora, and her producer, Jason McLagan, who's here. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, always great being on the show. Yeah, okay, it's been a year since you were here, Marie. Time flies. Yeah, Okay. A lot. <laughs> um, but here you are again, creating something. You guys are always creating, which is amazing. Um, and now it's flip the record. Why this story? Um, Jason and I have been working on a documentary for the last two years, um, tentatively titled Legions of Boom, which is based on a book by Oliver Wang about this particular scene. We've had him here on the show. Oh, yeah. So you can you know how like passionate he is and and how this is an amazing scene where these virtuosos like uh, Mixmaster Mike of the Beastie Boys and DJ Qbert, they came from this scene where at seventh grade they were just like scratching and teaching themselves how to DJ. And in that scene, there were also a lot of very strong women around them. Either they would be MCs, uh, some of them like DJ Icy Ice, his sister was a DJ. So this story came about like us being very inspired by doing this documentary. Um, learning all these stories from all the players in San Francisco and us saying like we would love to show like a fictionalized version of this featuring amazing music made by Filipinos showing the amazing talents of like these um, these these um, these LA actors so that's sort of where it stemmed from from me okay now Jason talk to us about producing this what were the biggest challenges um there's a lot of challenges anytime you're making a, a project with uh, not a lot of time and not a lot of money. So that's always kind of the the, the biggest hurdles um, mm -hmm. for you know an independent production. So um, you know this to add to what Marie was saying, this film kind of um, this project kind of came to us from another producer that uh, we worked with, Matt Keen Smith, and he really helped us elevate um, and kind of get this done on time and, and really brought a lot together with us. Um, he brought us the, the first draft of Oliver's book almost three years ago, and that's what kind of inspired Marie to take on um, telling this story because, you know, Marie being born in Manila, she didn't really know that there was this whole Asian American, Filipino American phenomenon happening in the Bay Area and in New York simultaneously. And so, um, in producing the documentary, we kind of really did a lot of the research for this story and that's how Marie was really able to write it with, with so much detail and um, so much kind of nuance for the characters and a lot of the, the detail of um, the production design as well as her story. I know, it looks amazing, Thank Marie. You. Uh, how, why, what was the deadline for this? Why did you mm. have to get it done? Uh, talk to us about the production aspects. We're always interested to find out how a film gets made, especially Malitam budget, yes. you know, like how are you able to do it with the resources you have? So Jason and I just spent our savings on it. Oh, uh, we did, we did. Um, but the reason why we made this film with a deadline, how it was uh, executed so quickly, was um, LA Asian Pacific Film, uh, sorry, LA Asian Pacific Film Festival had a contest with HBO called Asia Pacific American Visionaries, and they were looking for Asian American stories, and they had a deadline of November seventh. We heard about the contest in a, around September, so we decided, let, hey, let's 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 throw in our cards into this thing. And in six weeks, we wrote a script, found actors, shot it, edited it, scored it, edited it, all of it, 
in six weeks and we submitted it on time. Um, unfortunately, we did not win the contest. We heard it did very well. We were like top 10 or something, but um, that's, it's great because I work best under deadlines. And so <laughs> that's how the film was made. It was made in six weeks from conception to execution. Okay, um, it's so inspiring. As a filmmaker myself, it's like to be able to meet people that really get things done. I mean, that's how you make things happen, right? You just, you have to do it. You just <laughs> yeah. have to do it. Um, we'll give you the details of the screening at the Downtown Independent when we return, and we'll be talking to the filmmakers also. So stick around, we'll be right back.